Hello, so today I'm doing another scratch tutorial thing for like the first time in a long while, but this isn't this isn't a tutorial for a full game. Basically, it's a tutorial for instead of an entire game, just like one sort of thing in a game that can be put in like a lot of games. So basically, I already have a little game set up. It's very basic. You just avoid the octopus as I just used built-in sprites. So basically, I'm going to say how to have hitboxes, which is basically, there's a few different uses for having that, which is first of all, sometimes player shapes are weird, so like in this corner, if I can get there without being spawn camped by one of them, like the player's foot gets stuck. Okay, I'm just gonna turn off the octopuses. But basically, like in this corner, like the player's foot gets stuck because your whiskers interact with the wall. So that's one reason, which is that a lot of the time there's like annoying shapes of sprites and the second reason why you'd want hitboxes is so for example the way that the octopuses work is that they're set to just point towards the player and move towards it but I also have this code here which tells it to turn for visual effect but since that's to point towards the player it isn't able to turn so start off um, making hitboxes for players is actually really easy so the first thing you have to do is basically just go into your sprite and in vector mode because this would kind of just destroy your sprite basically just draw a box over your sprite that represents how big you want the hitbox to actually be so if i want the hitbox to be like this big like covers the majority of the areas but it doesn't have like the whiskers or tail or stuff that could get stuck on stuff. Next we want to do is to create a second sprite and copy this and paste it in this sprite and then delete it from this sprite. Then you want to create a new sprite and have the original costume you were using in this sprite and also this sprite is how all visuals of the sprite would act as, and then you, if you have any like movement and probably most logic, you'd want to be in the hitbox sprite. So I'm just going to set this to 50 because my other sprites have their size at 50 just to have more room. And then basically what we want to do with this is you just want it to kind of go onto your other sprite that it is acting as a hitbox for. So you also want to make sure you loop it because otherwise it'll just go to where you start. So as you can see you kind of just have these two versions of the sprite following each other right now. And there's basically one last thing you have to do. First of all you have to make sure that you have this one set as the hitbox costume instead of the normal because otherwise that would just get rid of the entire point of doing this. And second of all, you just need to add one block, which is set ghost effect and set it to 100. And the reason why you need to do this is so that it'll be invisible. So as you can see, during the game, you can't see it. And the reason why I can't just hide the sprite, because you think hiding the sprite would do the same, but the problem with that is that hidden sprites don't actually have collisions with other sprites. So you need to make sure to have it not hidden and have the ghost effect on so that it's invisible. Uh, it does appear when you have the game off, but you can, if you know about how thumbnails work, which is actually pretty similar, you could just have one of those. A lot of games have those. Now, for sprites that need to clone, it's a little more complicated to add a hitbox. So basically, the first thing is to <laughs> choose the hitbox size again, because you still need to do that. So this is pretty much the same. You basically just draw a shape. Also the hitboxes don't have to be squares, they can be any shape. If you wanted to you could just have it be a different sprite but that would kind of be pointless. So that's a good size and then you need to yet again create a new sprite and then I'm going to do the same thing with this so I copy and paste this into a separate costume and then I need to drag this costume into the enemy visual and yeah, again, I'm going to set to 50 just because in the game I previously had in here, that's how it worked. So then you need to 
make sure that this is set as your hitbox. So as you can see, they're all hitboxed now. So basically what you have to do is, um, as you can see, I have this clone number variable here, which I just used for something in here. And basically what this is, it's, it's just a variable, but it's set to be specific to this sprite. And when creating a variable, you can do this by just selecting for this sprite only. So I have that. And then for this, what I want to do is basically the same code. So basically the way it works is when flag clicked, you have the clone number, make sure that the original sprite's hidden if you don't want it to be there, and then just repeat however many clones you want, and it changes the clone number so that each one will have an individual clone number. And then it obviously clones. So I can actually just copy this over to here, uh, and it'll also, um, if you drag it into here, automatically create the variable for the separate sprite. So now is the enemy. Uh, you, or actually I keep calling it enemy, but it's really just whatever thing you want to clone. It's pretty simple. So to start out, the main, one of the reasons I wanted it for this is to have the turn. So this isn't actually part of how to do it, but I'm just going to have this because it's fun. And then basically you need to actually create, I'm going to create two lists. You might be able, you could probably do it with one, but it's simpler with two. And I'm just going to call these clones X and clones Y. You could call it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Um, but you should probably have it be something with X and something with Y. And then basically what we want to do is at the start of the project, delete the entirety of both lists. And then um, while it's creating clones, each time it creates a clone, you want it to add one item to each list. It doesn't matter what they are at this point. Oh, also, I'm going to set this to don't rotate so the hitbox won't turn around, because, you know, anyways. Then, basically, what you want the clones to do is get the replace item block and do replace item clone number, so that they will each basically have their own separate item on this list, and replace that with their X and their Y position, which basically allows other sprites to track individual clones X and Y position. So basically, if I put this here, as you can see, uh, I put them. You need to make sure that the Y is with one list and the X is with the other. And as you can see, it now tracks their locations. And then all you need the visuals to do is to say set X to, set Y to, and then item of clone X and item of clones Y. And then just replace these with clone number and clone number again. And as you can see, they will now follow around. Now I'm also, for the visuals, I'm just going to say set rotation style left, right. This isn't part of it, but that's just for what I'm doing. And if I turn off the variables, as you can see, they now have their sprites and I keep dying. And now all I have to do is make it so that this also gets the ghost effect. So as you can see, there are now enemies that will all individually have their own hitbox and their own visual to follow it. And it's relatively simple. If you have any questions, I'm going to try and probably answer questions in the comments just because this doesn't tell you how to do everything for it, so it could be a bit confusing. But yeah, thanks for watching the video. That was a fun time. Goodbye. Imagine I wasn't recording.